Mystery beckons, secrets unravel. Join Secretum on a thrilling exploration where the unknown whispers your name. While shadows hide untold secrets, your curiosity holds the key. Subscribe and like, unlock the whispers, and together, we'll illuminate the path to hidden truths. The Wolf and the Twins The Birth of Romulus and Remus In the ancient city of Alba Longa, a Numitor named Ruled. He had a beautiful daughter named Rhea Silvia, who was a Vestal Virgin and dedicated to serving the goddess Vesta. However, Rhea Silvia was seduced by the god Mars, and she gave birth to twin boys. The Cruel Amulius When Numitor's brother, Amulius, found out about the twins, he was furious. He ordered the infants to be thrown into the Tiber River to drown. However, a she-wolf found the basket with the twins and carried them to her cave, where she nursed and raised them as her own. The twins grow up. The twins, Romulus and Remus, grew up to be strong and brave young men. They learned to hunt and fight, and they soon became leaders among the shepherds of the region. One day, Romulus and Remus decided to build a city on the Palatine Hill where the she-wolf had found them. They argued about where to build the city walls, and Remus mocked Romulus's wall. In anger, Romulus killed Remus. Romulus went on to found the city of Rome, naming it after himself. He became the first king of Rome and ruled for many years. Romulus and his rule over Rome Romulus ruled Rome for 38 years, from 753 BC to 715 BC. His reign marked the beginning of Rome's history and its early years. Romulus was a pragmatic and ambitious leader who focused on transforming Rome into a strong and prosperous city-state. After founding Rome, Romulus was elected as the city's first king. He established the Senate, the most important political body in the city, and formed the Roman army, launching campaigns against neighboring tribes. Romulus worked on establishing Rome as a society based on laws, enacting a set of laws known as the Twelve Tables. Romulus ruled as an absolute monarch, limiting the Senate's authority. He established an administration loyal and obedient to him. Romulus focused on ensuring Rome's defense and security, fortifying the city with strong walls. Some of Romulus's most notable achievements include the founding of Rome and becoming its first king, the establishment of the Senate, the formation of the Roman army, the enactment of the Twelve Tables, ensuring Rome's defense and security, There is no definitive information about Romulus's death. It is said that he suddenly disappeared and ascended into the sky in 715 BC. After Romulus's death, Rome entered a period of interregnum, followed by the election of Numa Pompilius as the second king. Legacy Romulus is remembered as the founder and first king of Rome. His efforts to transform Rome into a strong and prosperous city-state laid the foundation for the Roman Empire. Romulus played a significant role in establishing Rome's political and legal systems and contributed to Roman culture and values. The Legend of Romulus 
The legend of Romulus and Remus is one of the most well-known stories about the origins of Rome. The legend recounts the founding of Rome and Romulus's reign as the first king. The legend includes fantastical elements such as Romulus's birth, being nursed by a wolf on the Tiber River, and killing Remus. Second King Numa Pompilius, the wise and peaceful king. After the mysterious disappearance of Romulus, the first king of Rome, the city faced an uncertain future. The Romans, divided between the two main tribes, the Latins and the Sabines, struggled to agree on a successor. To avoid conflict, they decided to appoint an interim ruler from each tribe, each ruling for one year. After a year of this dual monarchy, it became clear that a permanent solution was needed. The Romans sought a wise and just leader who could unite the city and usher in a new era of peace and prosperity. It was then that Numa Pompilius, a Sabine renowned for his wisdom, piety, and devotion to justice, emerged as the ideal candidate. Numa was born into a noble family in the Sabine town of Cures. He received an excellent education, studying Greek philosophy and religion. He was known for his wisdom, piety, and devotion to justice. Despite his initial reluctance, Numa accepted the call to serve as Rome's second king. Unlike his predecessor, Numa was not a warrior king. He believed that Rome's strength should lie not in its military might, but in its moral character and religious devotion. He dedicated his reign to establishing religious institutions, promoting morality, and fostering peace. One of Numa's first acts as king was to create the office of Pontifex Maximus, the highest religious authority in Rome. He also established the Vestal Virgins, a group of priestesses dedicated to tending the sacred fire of Vesta, the goddess of the hearth and home. Numa also introduced a number of religious festivals and rituals, including the Lupercalia, a fertility festival, and the Salii, a festival dedicated to Mars, the god of war. These festivals helped to unify the Roman people and strengthen their sense of community. Numa's reign was marked by peace and prosperity. He is credited with transforming Rome from a warlike city into a peaceful and law-abiding society. His wisdom and dedication to justice earned him the respect and admiration of his subjects. The Passing of a King, Numa Pompilius Numa Pompilius, the wise and peaceful king of Rome, had ruled for 43 years. He had transformed the city from a warlike society into a prosperous and law-abiding state. Under his guidance, Rome had grown in size and influence, and its people had enjoyed a period of unprecedented peace and prosperity. But now, Numa was old and frail. He had long since passed the age of most men, and his health was failing. He knew that his time was coming to an end. One day, Numa summoned the Senate to the palace. He told them that he was dying and that they must choose a new king. He urged them to choose a man who was wise and just, and who would uphold the peace and prosperity that he had worked so hard to achieve. The senators were saddened by Numa's words, but they knew that he was right. They began to discuss who should be the next king. There were many candidates, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. Some senators favored a strong and experienced leader who could protect Rome from its enemies. 
Others preferred a wise and just ruler who would uphold the laws and traditions of the city. The debate continued for many days. Finally, the senators reached a decision. They chose Lucius Tarquinius Priscus, a wealthy and powerful Etruscan who had come to Rome many years ago. Tarquinius was a wise and experienced leader. He had been a successful businessman and a respected member of the community. He was also a skilled diplomat and a capable military commander. The senators believed that Tarquinius was the best man to lead Rome into the future. They were confident that he would uphold the peace and prosperity that Numa had worked so hard to achieve. Numa was pleased with the senator's choice. He knew that Tarquinius was a wise and capable leader who would be a good king for Rome. A few days later, Numa Pompilius died peacefully in his sleep. He was mourned by the entire city. His death marked the end of an era, but his legacy would live on for centuries to come. Numa Pompilius ruled Rome for 43 years until his death in 673 BC. He is remembered as one of the wisest and most peaceful kings in Roman history. In 673 BC, Rome was still a relatively young city-state. It had been founded by Romulus about 100 years earlier and had been growing and developing steadily ever since. Thanks to the 43-year peaceful reign of Numa Pompilius, Rome had become one of the most powerful city-states in Italy. The population had grown, the economy had flourished, and the city had expanded. Some key features of Rome in 673 BC. Population, approximately 100,000. Form of government, monarchy. King, Numa Pompilius. Economy, agriculture, trade. Religion, polytheism. Language, Latin. Culture, influenced by Etruscan and Greek cultures. Some important events in Rome in 673 BC. Death of Numa Pompilius. Lucius Tarquinius Priscus elected king. Rebuilding of the Forum construction of walls around the city. Some important people living in Rome in 673 BC. Numa Pompilius. Lucius Tarquinius Priscus. Ancus Martius. Servius Tullius. Tarquinius Superbus. In conclusion, Numa Pompilius and the other early kings of Rome were important figures in the city's history. They made significant contributions to Rome's development and helped to lay the foundation for its future greatness. Roma Uno di Non Est Condita Rome wasn't built in a day.